Alright, just a quick intro for Ring of the Hawk today as it's going to be a long video, but holy crap, how have I not made this video before? It shows that there's still plenty of great Ring of the Hawk episodes left to make. I think it's going to be new champions today. This could potentially be the best short run of wrestling, period. 30 or less matches, and only main shows count. Let's go. Today's video was also a Patreon request by Matthew Harvey. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. And of course... If you know a wrestler that can do... The J-O-B to the H-A-W-K Any night, any day, ha ha! Shove their name in the comments, Jack! Okay, okay, Jeff and Matt Hardy, will this run be gnarly? Match 1, tag match. Rob Van Dam teams up with Mr. Anderson to take on the Hardy Boys. This is 2011 and they haven't teamed for two years. You'd think that this would be a big deal, but it just isn't. I think it's because the Hardys are heels. We start with brawling on the ramp. They come to the ring where the Hardys are getting their asses kicked. The match calms down with RVD wrestling cold-blooded Matt Hardy. Big monkey flip from Rob on Matt and he tags out. Anderson's having an easier time against Matt. He gets a two from a corner clothesline. Matt turns it around for back elbow. Anderson comes into this match in a bad way and the Hardys are going to take full advantage of that. RVD eventually gets back in. Matt Hardy misses a moonsault and then Rob shows him how a moonsault's really done. The Hardys try to regroup on the outside but a flying no job Rob takes them out. Later on, Rob tries another dive, but he gets jerked off the top. It's the side effect from cold-blooded Matt Hardy now, just a two. Rob boots him in the face for the double down. Anderson and Jeff get the tags, but the wacky Mr. Anderson netbreaker gets a two. It should be over after the mic check, but the pin is broken up. Then there's a ref bump. Matt Hardy is kicked and given a mic check, but there's no ref. Beer money run out and attack RVD and Anderson. Anderson gets catapulted into a DDT. RVD gets super kicked. Beer Money are of course friends with the Immortal Faction. Matt Hardy hits the twist of hate on Anderson and Jeff Hardy hits the Swanton Bomb. The ref wakes up and that's the free. Do you think anyone's going to have the nutsack to steal Jeff Hardy's finishing manoeuvre during one of his actual matches? This is a hard one to grade because heel Hardys aren't really what anyone wanted to see. I'm giving it a B overall, it was a good main event but I'd rather see them as good guys. Now the Hardys don't team together for another three years because Matt Hardy doesn't stay with TNA. He returns to TNA full time in 2014. Match 2, Destination X 2014, tag team title match. The challengers are the Hardys and they take on the Wolves. Davey Richards and Eddie Slapner Edwards. The crowd are split between the two teams because both teams are faces. Matt Hardy is drop toe hold and then drop kicked in the head. Jeff gets the tag and he does better. Big spin kick on Davey Richards. The Hardys start working on his arm, we'll see if that continues. Double team suplex from the Hardy boys on Davey Richards. Davey frantically dumps his nappy and tries to make the tag. He can't do it. Then poetry in motion goes wrong and Richards runs off Jeff's back to do his own poetry in motion. Now he tags out. Eddie reverses the double team and snaps off a double hurricanrana. The Wolves howl with happiness and hit stereo suicide dives. The Wolves keep double teaming. Jeff Hardy's kicked into a German suplex followed by a jackknife cover, just a two. The crowd chant, this is awesome. Matt Hardy storms the ring and the Wolves are sent out of it. Jeff dives off his brother's back for a sort of super poetry in motion out of the ring. Moments later they hit the real thing in the ring. Side effect City from Matt Hardy, and that's quickly followed by the Swanton Bomb on Eddie. Davey stops the pin from being made. Matt Hardy surveys the ring and decides to hit a moonsault. It actually connects, just doesn't look that amazing. Matt Hardy uses his special ice pick submission, at the same time, Jeff does it too. The Wolves are in real trouble. Davey manages to drop Jeff on the others to break up both submissions at once. Jeff tries a dive to the outside which Davey dodges. The Wolves have Matt isolated now. Matt's thrown into a kick and then he gets double foot stops from both Wolves. Somehow, Matt Hardy kicks out of all of that. Edward sees Jeff waking up on the outside, so he flip dives him out of the ring. That gives Matt a chance to hit the twist of fate on Davey, just a two. His next one is reversed into a backslide for a two. We get a big powerbomb backstab combination from the Wolves. It's a nice move, and that is the finish. I really thought the Hardys were winning this one. Awesome match, though. The Wolves bow down to the Hardys after the match. I can't find any fault of it overall. This one's an A. Match 3, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy take on the Dudley boys, oh here we go. More than 10 years after all their famous matches, will they still have the ability to have a great match? The Hardys get the better of Devon for a while until he hits a spinning back elbow. The Dudleys double team Jeff with a side slam leg drop combination. After the break, Jeff hits Bubba with the head scissors. And the Hardys do their double leg drop, so far so good. One poetry motion hits, but the second is broken up. It's all the Dudley boys now. Jeff Hardy gets swatted out of the air by Devon Dudley. Bully starts hitting some comical elbow drops. Jeff desperately tries to fight back but he can't manage it and he gets double team back suplex netbreaker combination. 
Jeff Hardy's just getting destroyed in this one. That is until Bully takes too long on the top rope and Jeff Hardy snaps off the Frankensteiner. Just a two for Jeff. Tags are made on either side. Matt's hardly been in this match. He gets a two off a of Bulldog. He gets another two off a of Side Effect. And a third two off a of Moonsault. Bully breaks the pin up. Jeff does wake up now, but he can't manage to hit the Whisper in the wind. Devon climbs to the top. Matt puts him on his shoulders and we get a super whisper in the wind. Really nice move. The Hardys look for a double suplex from the top, but Bully breaks that up by simply launching Jeff across the ring. The Dudleys hit the Doomsday on Matt for a two. Jeff Hardy races back into the ring and he immediately gets flapjacked on top of his brother. What's up from the Dudleys now? And the Dudleys are thinking about a table where Jeff hits him with the super poetry in motion. Back in the ring, Matt hits the twist of fate and Jeff hits the swan tom on Devon. Then it gets a bit weird now, they're trying to do a pin, but Bubba pulls Jeff down and Devon kicks out. I think Jeff was supposed to fall on the pin and break it up, but it didn't happen. It doesn't matter anyway because seconds later the 3D from Team 3D beats Matt Hardy. My favourite match so far, even if that Devon kick out was a bit weird. It's another A, great tag team wrestling. Match 4, three way tag match, the Dudleys vs the Hardys vs the Wolves. They're doing this series to see who the best tag team is. Weird start to this one, the Hardys just stand on the apron uninvolved. They eventually storm the ring, but their poetry in motion is reversed. This seems to be a pretty basic tag match. Jeff looks really weird in this match too. Jeff takes the walls out with a dive to the outside. I have to admit, I was shocked to see Matt Hardy moonsaulting to the outside. Fair play for that. Later on, Matt Hardy is almost beaten by the kick into the German suplex into the jackknife cover. Jeff has to break the pin up. Devon saves Matt, who's getting destroyed by tagging in. Everyone starts hitting finishers. It's hard to see which way it's going. But ultimately, it goes to where the Dudleys and the 3D... Overall, fairly basic. I was impressed with Matt Hardy's moonsault, giving this one a C. Match 5, three-way tag team table match. The Dudley Boys versus Matt and Jeff Hardy versus the Wolves. The crowd are really excited for this match. They really want to see some tables. We get a what's up in the first minute, which is probably the earliest I've ever seen it done. Devon is set to get the tables, but this one's far from over. The Wolves try to take the Dudleys out, but a table is shunted into them. Then the Hardys kick the table in half. The Hardys find some different ways to use the table that you don't normally see. Davey almost wins for superplex for a table, which Devon moves out of the way at the last second. Now it's Eddie Edwards' turn to almost taste the wood with a doomsday. Again, the table is moved out of the way. The whisper in the wind from Jeff takes out both Dudleys. Yet another tease with Bubba almost losing, but he dodges the whisper in the wind through the table. Something else I've not seen before is a table bridged upside down. Jeff can't put Davey through it and Edwards takes him out of a dive. The Wolves are looking the most likely now. They reverse a twist of fate and throw Matt Hardy into a kick. The Dudleys move the upside down table, which gets loudly booed. The Wolves have to break up a 3D on Hardy. Eddie Edwards almost sends himself through the table. The Hardys have a chance now as Matt hits the twist of fate and Eddie Edwards is set up on a table on the outside of the ring. Jeff dives with a swanton bomb and yes, the Hardys get their first win in TNA as a tag team. I was starting to think it was getting a bit silly. It was good, nothing too crazy, a B is fair. Match 6, tag title ladder match, the Hardys versus the Dudleys versus the Wolves. This is the decider and it's a match you would expect the Hardys to win as well. But it's the Wolves who are taking all the risks in the early going. The Hardys have to stop them from getting a quick win in this one. The Wolves aren't very grateful. The Wolves start using a ladder as a battering ram. Jeff Hardy decides to do a whisper in the wind into the ladder. It looks really cool but I failed to see how that would hurt the Wolves more than Jeff Hardy. Later on we get Bubba powerbombing Jeff Hardy into a stack of ladders. Pretty cool. Hardy wakes up after 5 minutes and Matt hits the twist of fate off the ladder. Jeff climbs the ladder but Buddy meets him up there. Wow, a super duperplex. Hardy's feet literally hit the belts as he flies over. That is crazy. Surprisingly, that doesn't kill off Jeff, and they hit double twists of fate on the Dudleys. They follow up with the Moonsault and the Swanton Bomb. They can't climb the ladders because the wolves are being pesky. Jeff Hardy hits a poetry in motion into the ladder on Eddie. Davy is slammed on a ladder and splashed into the ladder. Really good match here. The Hardys have taken too long and the Dudleys have awoken, and they have a table in hand. Davy Richards double stomps Matt Hardy for a table. There's a really scary spot towards the end of this match. Jeff's on top of the ladder and Davey starts pulling the ladder away. And Jeff sort of falls on top of the ladder in midair. The Wolves win it. What a match. I always ask Ring of the Hawk competitors to put their body on the line for the Hawk. And nobody can say the Hardys didn't do that. And I'm not a fan of the Wolves, but fair play to the other two teams for trying to put over the younger guys. It's an A. Match 7. I thought that ladder match would be the decider, but it may be about to get even crazier. Three-way Full Metal Mayhem match which is basically a TLC match for non-TNA fans. And it's for the tag belts. The Hardy Boys versus the Dudleys versus the Champions, the Wolves. Matt Hardy is the first Hardy Boys to take some serious damage when he's hit with the big rock bottom from Bully Boy. He's also hit with the Wolves kick and German suplex into a chair. 
Jeff Hardy might go back to Carolina if he keeps getting upstaged. Randomly, Eddie Edwards accidentally works a bully raid to hit the sort of 3D on Jeff. Some really fun moves in this match. Matt Hardy superplexes a wolf whilst being on Bully's shoulders. You'd think the Hardys would have learned by now not to try and do poetry in motion on the wolves, but no, they're dumb. Jeff gets a ladder thrown in his face. This is a very long match, 25 minutes. Jeff realises he hasn't done that much in the 25 minutes, so he nails Bubba with the whisper in the wind straight away followed by the swan tom. Now you remember that upside down table from previous matches, where Jeff Hardy throws himself through one with a leg drop. Good to finally have a payoff to that. Matt Hardy's still alive in this one, and he works with Bubba to throw Eddie Edwards off the ladder. He continues to have a brawl with Bubba on top of the ladder until they both fall with Hardy smashing into a ladder behind him. Matt Hardy's still putting his body on the line, he leg drops Davey through a table on the outside. Devon is taken out by Jeff Hardy, throws him off the top and through two tables. Bit of a botch now, Jeff Hardy tries to make his own Van Daminator with a drop kick instead, but he misses it. They just do it again, but the chance to impress has been missed. Things get crazier now though, Hardy's on top of a ladder and it's pushed over as he sort of splashes to the outside on Bubba through some tables. Matt Hardy is somehow still alive, but not for long because he's powerbombed for a table. The Wolves win again. Pretty simple, another A. It's awesome to see that it's not just Jeff taking the risks, but where do the Hardys go from here? Well, the answer to that is back to the very start of the queue as they go into a tag team tournament. Match 8, first round tournament, the Hardy Boys versus... Oh no. DJ Zima Ion. I can't stand this stupid screaming DJ gimmick. And then it gets worse because he teams with Jesse Goddard. It's a 5 minute match which feels extremely deflating after the last one, but I guess they can't all be balls to the wall. Hardys do show some new tag team moves for this video. Unsurprisingly, Jeff Hardy wins with a swanton bomb on Jesse. It was fine, it was a C. Match 9, second round tag team tournament match. Tyrus and EC3 take on the Hardy boys. EC3 starts out by reminding Matt who he is, just in case any of you have forgotten about this guy. Within one minute, EC3 is suplexed and hit of a Jeff Hardy splash. It could be over, but it isn't. Nice head scissors now from Jeff Hardy. He's getting destroyed. It's a poetry emotion straight into a side effect. Fat boy Tyrus gets the tag and he does a lot better putting his weight to good use. The Hardys are beaten for a while now until EC3 tries to do a stinger splash and the match completely turns at this point. EC3 is hit with the twist of fate stunner and he bounces over to his partner. Tyrus smashes both the Hardys down and tries to finish them with a big squash, which he completely misses. Jeff stunners him, Matt does the twist of fate and that ends the match. Just an average match, probably the worst so far in fact, it's a D. Match 10, Tag Team Tournament Final, The Beatdown Clan, Loki and Samurjo vs The Hardy Boys. Man, I wish they'd given The Hardys better music. Probably the worst during any of Jeff's TNA runs. And I know it's him actually singing the music, but it's just a horrible noise. You'd think this match would be good with the names involved, but it just feels like we're going through the motions here. There just isn't much to say until the closing stages. Matt Hardy gets hit with a low-key Warrior's Way. Jeff takes him out in response for front suplex. Jeff Hardy looks for poetry emotion, motion, which almost leads to low-key getting the sneaky pin. Matt hits a twist of fate. The pin is broken up. Then Samoa Joe has the clutch locked on Matt Hardy, which Jeff breaks up with a swanton bomb. The poetry emotion motion is now the setup for the finish, apparently. Jeff hits the swanton and Matt hits the moonsault for the free. Just an average match at this point, a C. The Hardys are again the number one contenders for the tag belts. Or not, because TNA lost its TV deal and went over to a new TV network and they had to take a short break. Match 11, tag title match, number one contendership match, Matt and Jeff Hardy versus the Wolves. It's another match lacking on energy. We do get something new here with the Hardys doing a high-low attack on Davey. The match gets turned as the Wolves keep hitting screaming attacks on the Hardys. After a long time, Matt dodges a double foot stomp and hits the side effect. Jeff gets the tag. Double whisper in the wind on the Wolves, but they bail from the ring. We get a nice trade-off as neither team can hit dives. Matt Hardy is thrown onto the ring apron and he springboards backwards for double DDT. Nice move from Matt Hardy. Jesus, now Jeff Hardy runs along the top rope and throws himself out of the ring. The commentary team suck and say nobody's ever done that except The Undertaker. Poor elix skipper. Eddie Edwards blocks the swanton bomb with his knees and they hit Jeff with a kick into a falcon arrow. It's a two and the crowd have woken up now. Yet again a side effect from Matt Hardy. Eddie Edwards steals the twist of fate and Davey double stops him to add insult to injury. The pin is broken up with the Jeff Hardy swanton bomb. Jeff throws Davey overhead and out of the ring, so he's now dead. The poetry of motion is the setup for an unusual twist of fate where Matt Hardy holds Edwards in the air. That's the free. I was impressed to see some new things in this match. I have to credit the Hardys. Every time I start getting a bit bored, they pull something new out of the bag. This match is an A. Match 12, cage tag title match. The Hardy boys versus the champions, the revolution, who will be represented by the idiot abyss and the cowboy James Storm. 
What a strange collection of people this is. It all seems to be pretty simple in this one. The Hardys are throwing everyone with suplexes. The goons on the outside are trying to interfere and the Hardys handcuff them to the cage. Taz is perplexed on how the Hardys have handcuffs. Later, James Storm hits a diving elbow into an abyss big splash. He now has a fat man's finisher. This match is kind of lame and the Hardys hit three twists of fate and a splash, but it's just a two. Matt misses the top rope moonsault, but moments later he hits the twist of fate from the top onto James Storm. Mahabali Shearer drags Matt out of the cage through a camera hole. Jeff hits the twist of fate. What's that, five of them now? He tries to climb the cage, which doesn't work as he's missed it in the face. James Storm nails Jeff with the last cool super kick and it's over. I absolutely hated this match. They had no ideas and just spam twist of fates. It's an S from the Hawk. At least Matt is sky high for a table after the match. I appreciate him putting his body on the line for the Hawk. Jeff also takes a cowbell to the head and falls off the cage door onto some steps. Okay, that looked painful. Fair play. It's a C. Match 13. Yet another tag team tournament match. Talk about spinning your wheels. The Hardys take on the Revolution, who are no longer the champions. This time it's Storm and Shearer. Matt tries to dive on Shearer off the ring apron, but he's caught and slammed on the steps. Not much else to say. The twist of fate at the Swanton Bomb ends it. Didn't enjoy it, but it's just a nothing match. It's a D. Match 14, later that same night, Ultimate X Tag Team Title Match. The belts are currently vacant. The Hardy Boys versus Kenny King and Loki versus EC3 and Tyrus versus the Dirty Hills, Robert Roode and Austin Aries. This match is mainly just going to be about the Dirty Hills and the Hardys. The other two teams are jealous because they suck and they take them out. This is one of those Ultimate X matches where the Hardys use a ladder, which is generally frowned upon. The Hardys clear the ring with the ladder shots and they both climb up the structure. Loki and Kenny King also join them up there. Fatboy Tyra shakes the structure to knock them all down with Jeff taking a cool bump. Later we get Matt Hardy hitting a twist of fate off the ladder. Matt is used to being frowned upon so he tries to climb the ladder again to get the belt. Loki stops him but Jeff Hardy's also up there. Jeff Hardy kicks Loki down and the Hardys have captured the belts. They have finally done it. I'm shocked it took 14 matches. The match itself was not good but we always grade upwards for a belt win on Ring of the Hawk. It's a C. Match 15, six-man street fight tag. The Hardys and Davey Richards take on the Revolution, Abyss, Shearer, and Manic. The Hardys are desperately lacking a storyline or compelling opponents. Matt Hardy hits the twist of fate, but Jeff can't hit the Swanton Bomb. Shearer picks Jeff up, but then he proceeds to slowly lower him to the ground before slamming him. You'd think the Hardys could do something fun in this match with weapons evolved, but so far not. We do get a giant tower spot, which is pretty nice. There just isn't much going on here. Jeff moves the chair into Abyss's nutsack. Matt does the twist of fate and the Swanton Bomb ends it. I'm giving it an S because it was seriously boring. Well, little did I know, I wouldn't have too much to worry about this run becoming boring. Jeff Hardy gets injured and Matt has to relinquish the tag belts. Jeff broke his leg doing a stunt on his little bike. What follows is basically a completely separate video. But whilst Jeff was injured, Matt Hardy went through a complete character change. He became Big Money Matt, the TNA Heavyweight Champion, and he was a heel. When Jeff returned, Matt Hardy was being a dick to him. They feuded with each other with Matt Hardy coming out on top and forcing Jeff to become brother Nero. They had some extremely memorable matches like Final Deletion. Match 16 tag match. Matt's bitch wife Rebby gives them a ring intro and this is the official ring debut of the Broken Hardys. At this point the crowd are pretty much in silence they think Matt is a weirdo. Hilarious entrance here where Jeff Hardy has music saying I'll fade away and classify myself as obsolete whilst Rebby aggressively screams obsolete in his ear. Jeff Hardy looks miserable about being bullied and he doesn't like being called a mule either. Jeff hasn't embraced this broken stuff yet. And nor of the crowd. Matt demands that Jeff wins the tag titles on his own and he's banned from diving off the top rope too. They take on two jobbers, JC Dunn who makes the girls run and Chuck Taylor, the girls call him failure. So yeah, it's a tag match but it name only, it's basically a handicap match. Matt Hardy's doing running commentary on the outside of the ring. Jeff hits a kick but the pin is broken up. One of the jobbers hits a diving armbar on Jeff and smiles with happiness. The jobbers hit a double back elbow. The other wacky jobber does an elbow drop for two. The crowd are having a great time messing with Matt Hardy. He's furious at them using the Jeff Hardy name. Now it's a high knee followed by a discus forearm. Never have I ever seen two jobbers getting so much offense before. Matt is now attacking fat fans at ringside. Jeff Hardy starts finding a foot in the match but he can't put away the jobber. In the end, it's the twist of fate stunner into a real twist of fate, which takes away a jobber. The second is hit with a back body drop and hit with a twist of... Wait, no, he's not. The jobber hangs on, kicks Jeff in the face. The jobber tries another discus forearm, but this time he catches a twist of fate with authority, and what a sell that was. 
Matt tells Jeff that he isn't allowed to dive off the top rope and he tries to block him in the ring. Jeff doesn't care and Swanton bombs over Matt. As a punishment for that, Matt takes his own brother out and tags himself in. Matt makes the cover for the free. It was crazy and it's really cool to see the early stages of the Broken Hardys here. It's an A for character work and general entertainment. Matt 17 tag match. The reaction to Matt has improved. Brother Nero now seems to be embracing obsolete more. Jeff tells Matt before the match that he needs his help in this one, but Matt won't do it. He says Jeff cost them the tag belts. After an entertaining promo, they're interrupted by their opponents tonight. They are the Tribunal with Al Snow. Oh great, I can't believe I'm finally having to talk about these two guys on this channel. They're basically evil bland French guys who were pushed hard for about two months. Nobody cared. Matt is still refusing to help his brother out. In fact, Jeff has to deal with Al Snow too. One of the Tribunal guys is called Dax and he has the weirdest facial expressions I've ever seen in wrestling. Jeff gives his weird face a face breaker, but he can't tag Matt. The Tribunal move on to working on Jeff's arm. Matt Hardy starts brainwashing fans at ringside and then he bites Al Snow. It's the most entertaining part of the match. Matt even beats up a French guy and he smacks him with his boot time and time again. This allows Jeff to hit the twist of fate for the free. This really wasn't a good match and if it wasn't for Matt, I'd dump it in the zone. Jeff Hardy flips after the match because he's tired of having to try and impress Matt. He drives Al Snow for a table and then he swanton bombs himself for a table for absolutely no reason. Jeff is now admitting that he is brother Nero. Both Hardys share a laugh about this. Plenty of character progression to be found here in the end from the Hardy Boys, a C for entertainment. Match 18, Ascension to Hell ladder match for the number one contendership for the tag belts. The bromance with Raquel versus the French guys versus Trevor Lee and Andrew Everett. Good to see Trevor Lee who makes the girls pee got to have a match against his trainers. Versus the broken Hardys. Jeff now has a new look as he is obsolete. He looks like a zombie or something. The French guys work together to throw the obsolete mule into a ladder. Jeff retaliates by diving off the top rope. It looks like he barely connects. Most of Matt Hardy's moves are just biting now. He even tries to bite Raquel who slaps him. His reaction to it makes me laugh. The bromance hit him with a power slam and a diving fist drop. Jeff Hardy does a frantic diving splash on the outside of the ring on a French guy. Matt Hardy's in the ring now and he hits a side effect on a ladder which is on its side. I'm sure that has an effect. The match ends when Jeff Hardy and Trevor Lee crash into each other off ladders and Matt Hardy pulls down the contract for a title shot. This certainly wasn't like any Hardys in a ladder match you'd expect to see. It's just a D for character work. Match 19, Bound for Glory 2016. The tag team titles will be decided in the Great War. Rebby does a full piano intro for the Hardys entrance. Jeff Hardy sings his obsolete line, which the crowd love. They're taking on the champions, the Decay, who are Abyss and Crazy Steve of Rosemary. The Decay all spray mist into Rebby's face as soon as the bell goes. This is essentially just an anything goes match. Matt Hardy hits a belly spelly on Steve for a two. Imagine if it had just ended like that. Later, Crazy Steve holds a trash can next to Matt's head and then Rosemary smashes it for coast to coast. We haven't seen much from the other two yet. Abyss is playing with a staple gun. The match starts heading backstage. This is of course just to turn into a pre-tape match which gets crazy. Steve dumps a bucket of water on Jeff which says Lake of Reincarnation on it and Jeff disappears. Matt Hardy and Abyss are outside fighting in the resort. Jeff Hardy eventually re-emerges as one of his crazy characters called Itchweed. He's talking all fast and crazy. He basically sounds like he took every type of drug that exists all at the same time. He puts a pumpkin on Rosemary's head. She still misses him for it though. He has goggles on, why would he still be affected? Rosemary brings Abyss's stick. He's about to hit Matt Hardy but he gets distracted and they both get taken away in a pickup truck. Jeff Hardy has now turned into one of his other characters, Willow the Wasp, or is it Wisp? The other two are now fighting in the truck with some drone shots. Vanguard 1 takes out Rosemary of some mist of its own. Steve and the Wasp return to the impact zone. Steve hits a cannonball into the steps on him. Abyss and Matt have also returned. Abyss suplexes Matt on the ramp, but not long after it all goes wrong for Abyss. He gets the twist of fate and the swanton bomb. Somehow he kicks out of that. Abyss powers them away and chokeslams his own partner on top of Matt Hardy. A barbed wire board comes into play, and of course dumb tax. Matt slams Abyss into the board with a side effect. Another board is placed on top of him. Matt drops the elbow. Rosemary awkwardly breaks up this pin. Matt Hardy's wife Rebby returns and power bombs her into a table. Oh, crazy Steve is given a twist of fate whilst his head is twisted up in a chair. I felt that one. Matt Hardy gives Jeff permission to dive off the ladder, which is actually quite a big deal, and that ladder is huge. Jeff dives from it with a swanton bomb putting crazy Steve through the table. And that, my little friends, is how the Great War ended. A fun match and a tag title win. Can't really go wrong with that. It's an A from the Hawk. Match 20, TNA tag title match. Wolf's Creek match. It's basically a cage match with weapons. Sadly, no Creek. 
The Broken Hardys with Rebby, who are the champions, take on Decay, Crazy Steve and Abyss. After the Great War, this one's unfortunately a bit slow and depressing. The Decay slowly dominate with weapons for ages. Matt is a different man now and he's much more of a brawler, and he fires back at the monster. The Hardys do a double suplex on Stevie, which I believe is the first wrestling move of this match. Matt Hardy has a chainsaw, and he becomes just the second man in TNA to hold a chainsaw. Unfortunately, Steve stops him from using it. Matt hits the side effect on Steve, but he walks into an Abyss chokeslam. Jeff Hardy nails the twist of fate on Abyss. He climbs the cage, but Rosemary runs out and sprays him in the eyes. No big bump here from Jeff though. Rebby gets involved too, which allows the Hardys to do a double back suplex. Abyss is handcuffed to the cage, which allows the Hardys to single out Crazy Steve. Matt Hardy ends up climbing and falling out the cage to win. Just not good. Nothing nice to say about this one. It's an S. Massive anti-climax. Match 21. At this point, the fans are going crazy for this gimmick. They will delete their opponents, who happen to be... Oh no, not the Tribunal again. Baron Dax, who's the one in the tight black shirt, fights off a twist of fate, but gets a DDT for his efforts. He does manage to fight off the Persia in motion with a sort of mid-air shove. He now grabs Jeff around the throat and shoves him to the mat. The Tribunal are trying hard to isolate Jeffrey, and it works for a while. That is until Jeffrey does a Russian leg sweep and tags out. Not exactly a move you'd associate with Jeff. Matt Hardy bites his opponent into a belly to belly. The Bulldog gets Matt a two count and the side effect another two count. Has that move ever beaten anyone? The Tribunal have enough of his antics and hit him with a double spine buster. Jeff Hardy makes the save and hits a twist of fate. And it's a jawbreaker into a twist of fate, followed by another twist of fate. Not something I'd ever watch again, this match is an S. Match 22 tag match, the Broken Hardys take on the Death Crew Council, aka the Mass Morons. It's not really much of a match, after two minutes the ref is taken out. The brawl continues backstage where we get a rare sighting of a Harris twin in 2016. Matt Hardy chases down a man in a forklift. We end up with a massive cliffhanger as Matt Hardy suffers a fall and seems to have lost his memory. The match is an S. Match 23, 3 on 2 handicap match for the tag titles, the DCC, Bram, Kingston, James Storm versus the champions, the Hardy Boys. I've seen this match before for Ring of the Hawk and unfortunately it's long and not a lot happens. The crowd are barely reacting to anything that's happening. Matt almost wins with a simple second rope elbow. We get a poetry in motion crushing two men, which is a first for this video. The Hardys win a very long, boring match with a double twist of fate on Eddie Kingston. I really feel like the lack of good competition is affecting this run. When the Hardys face an established team, the match is always better. This one is also an S, unfortunately, extremely boring. Match 24. For this one, we're going back to North Carolina. Where it all began in the Hardys' barn. This is the tag team Apocalypto for the tag belts. It's a Fool's Cat Anywhere elimination match. There's actually so many people in this match and a lot of them are indie workers I've never heard of, so I'm not listing all the competitors. You can shove it. There's a big fire or something and everyone has to leave the bomb. The good guys shoot the bad guys with fireworks. What am I even watching here? Once again, we have Matt Hardy fighting in the back of a pickup truck. Jeff forces the ref to ride a dirt bike with him. You can understand the ref's fear given Hardy's past on dirt bikes. A group of geek indie workers are recruited by the Decay. Shane Helms and the Dynasty fight at the side of a motorway. The fight seems to carry on an antique shop, then a train line. I'm surprised they were allowed to have done this. Matt Hardy somehow uses his superpowers when he's about to be pinned to move a dilapidated boat to save him. The Dynasty beat up the boat. Matt comes to the boat's aid. What am I even saying here? Shane Helms is knocked into the Lake of Reincarnation and he re-emerges as Shane Helms from Free Count in WCW. A hilarious throwback. He complains that his partners aren't Shannon or Evan, and they super kick him back into the lake. That's probably my main complaint with this match, a complete lack of stoner friend. For a while, the Hardys fight the Rock and Roll Express in an actual wrestling ring whilst the flame keeps going off. Jeff Hardy and everyone's favourite grandma Ricky Morton are fighting in cranes above the ring. Nothing happens and Matt Hardy moves the cranes. Jeff decides to dive from this crane, but he misses his swanton bomb. It wasn't even that high anyway. Matt Hardy beats Robert Gibson with the twist of fate. Matt tells off Jeff and calls him a spot monkey. The grandma is left on top of the crane. The Decay have been beating teams left, right and centre, but then they run into the Hardys and the Helms dynasty. The Abyss choke slams Jeff Hardy, but he can't take advantage as he has a firework fight with Vanguard 1. Elsewhere, the Helms dynasty are about to beat Matt with shovels when the Hurricane arrives and saves Matt. They pin the dynasty and then they bury them alive so they can... They pin the dynasty and then they bury them with shovels so they can make a joke about burying young talent like Triple H. The Hardys and the Decay fight inside a flaming Hardy symbol. They really went all out with this thing, didn't they? It all ends when Matt Hardy hits Abyss in the gut of his barbed wire stick Janice. Jeff Hardy hits Crazy Steve with a twist of fate into a volcano, which causes him to fly through the air and the Decay are beaten. 
More fireworks go off to celebrate as Rebby reveals that she's pregnant again. What a match. Really entertaining. Crazy stuff. It's an A. Match 25. Tag team title match. The champions, the Hardys versus the Wolves. Been a while since we've seen these two teams together. There's a very long feeling out process in this one. The Wolves speed up and double team Jeff with the drop toe hold into the drop kick. The Hardys respond with their tag team elbow drop thing. Matt Hardy is still playing along with his gimmick and he smashes Eddie Edwards into the turnbuckle with the crowd shouting delete for every time he does it. Two count off the poetry of motion. Come on Hardy, you're supposed to set up your finishers from that one. A really cool spot here is Davey doing a Northern Lights on one Hardy whilst pinning the other. It doesn't end the match though. He also gets both Hardys in submissions at the same time. They make the ropes. Matt Hardy's in trouble for ages until the side effect hits. Jeff Hardy gets the tag and the double whisper in the wind hits the Wolves, one leg for each hound. He follows up with the Swanton Bomb, but the knees are up for Edwards. They hit Jeff Hardy with their kick into the suplex move. Jeff looks done, but he dodges the double stomp. Matt storms the ring and twists the fate and the Swanton Bomb. No, Davey Richards breaks up the pin. The Wolves look for another double team, but Eddie is a slap nut and throws himself out of the ring. Davey is annoyed and yells at his slap nut partner. Jeff rolls him up whilst he's distracted. That's the three. Not as good as any of their earlier stuff, it's a C. By the way, I haven't really talked about it too much, but at the same time as all this is going on, the Hardys are doing this expedition of gold thing where they wrestle around the world trying to win as many belts as possible. It ends up being about six or seven. Match 26, final match. Three corners match for the tag titles. The Broken Hardys versus the DCC versus the Decay. The Hardys are barely in this one. They just let the two other teams fight. Jeff Hardy eventually says screw it and attacks the Abyss. It doesn't go well. He's isolated with James Storm taking shots from the outside. Matt gets the tag and he does do a bit better, but then the match breaks down. Kingston hits Matt with an STO for a two. He's not celebrating his move for long because he gets a mist in the eyes. Jeff dives off the apron with an axe handle and Matt puts Kingston away at the twist of fate. A completely nothing match, but the crowd seems to like it. It's a D. What happened next was a bit weird. The Hardys were off the TNA show for a bit. They still appeared occasionally doing weird things like talking to giraffes and giving us updates on their progress to their expedition of gold. Their TNA contracts were up, but they were still the tag team champions. So what's going to happen here? Now the Hardys offered to return to TNA for one night to drop the belts, but TNA's parent company declined. And what they do instead? Well, it sucks Sunny Siaki's ass. The Hardys teleport with their drone somewhere, but the teleportation ends up in the impact zone. And instead of the Hardys, it's the Decay. And they have the tag belts. Whilst this was not an official title change, the whole thing was ridiculous, dumb and confusing. Not a great end to a really cool run. Right, all that's left to do is grade this thing to see if the Hardys can have a place on the Ring of the Hawk roster. For the first half, they had some incredibly good matches, but it was lacking storylines. Considering TNA was on its knees at this point, they did do a good job trying to make people care. I guess they gave people a reason to still watch the TNA show at this point. When they became the Broken Hardys, the match quality suffered, but the entertainment value was second to none. And during the Broken Hardys, they did have one or two incredibly good creatively good matches. I graded seven of these matches as A's and two as B's. You've also got to factor in that most of this run was taking place with TNA as absolute worst and they only had so many people to work with. And the Hardys completely reinvented their characters and became the biggest things in pro wrestling for a short period. So I have to give their final grade an A. Oh, yeah. I'm also going to make them the new champions. Oh, it was yeah. better than MJF and MLW and it was better than Hamada and TNA. Yes, there were some boring parts, but it was a pretty long run and the positives far outweigh the negatives. And if you don't agree with that, I'll decide who dies and who lives.